Okay, welcome to the show. Sorry, I'm laughing, but um, our guest today just uh, just said something and just made me laugh. Um, hi, I'm Paul Burgess. Welcome to the show. Uh, today's guest is, in my opinion, one of the um, one of the great legends in the industry, um, Udo Erasmus, and he founded Udo's Choice. And if you've ever had a bottle of Udo's oil or the superfoods or anything like that, this is the guy you have to blame for it. Uh, he's a um, best-selling author. Uh, wrote the book Fat Set Heal. Fats that kill. He's a speaker all around the world, does a lot of um, work with the likes of Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra and that kind of stuff. Um, and we are going to talk a lot about health today, um, his viewpoint, because he has 77 years of experience um, and th there's nothing not good to listen to from uh, our guest today. So Udo, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me on. It's been um, exciting waiting for you because I know you know, I know a bit about your background and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and, I, and I was keen to, to have this chat. So tell us mm -hmm. then, for people that don't know, although, you know, you're 77 years old, your I, journey... Actually, I'll be 80 in, in May. Oh, wow. So that was a long... <laughs> so, my, okay. So my apologies, 80. <clears throat> no problem. <laughs> but what, so actually, you've been in the business for 77 and a half years because you started quite young, right? Yeah, I started young because I was a war baby. I was a refugee kid. Uh, we were, <clears throat> my parents came from Latvia and Estonia. And uh, when Hitler and Stalin made their non-aggression pact, Latvia went to the Soviet Union and part of Poland went to Germany. But there was nobody from Latvia or Poland at the meeting. So in other words, they just took it because they were big and they could. And so because we had German Swedish background, we we left my parents left latvia because they knew the, the communists they loved russians they hated communism because everything got taken away became state ownership it's uh <clears throat> and so they they left and were given a farm in poland so i was born on that farm in poland and uh when the war ended we were fleeing out of poland with the communists chasing us in tanks and trucks and the allies you know, we called them the good guys. They were using us refugees in horse-drawn hay wagons, women with young children on dirt roads, trying to get the hell out of Poland. They were using us as target practice and shooting at us from planes. And so my, mother's, my mother couldn't handle it. And she decided to go through the fields because it was safer through the fields. It was winter, it was cold, it was, it was messy. But it was it was safer than staying on the road. But she had six kids and she could only handle two. So four got left behind. And I was the one, right. one of the ones that got left behind. Oh, and okay. I just remember in that whole time, just not feeling safe, not knowing what I could rely on. Uh, remember being hungry. And it was like, it was so confusing, noise and confusion. And one day you'd get told one thing and the next day you'd get told the opposite because it was a, obviously not a place where you raise kids <laughs> on, yeah. a, on, a re, on a refugee race to try and survive, right? Yeah. And the stability that, that children have from, you know, the regular routine from their parents and everything else. And yeah, yeah. You know, that's completely gone. There's no- That was all, all out the window. I mean, there were no, no windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so uh, I, I grew up really shy because I never felt safe, right? Mm. And so I did, a, I read a lot of books because books are safe. You can read a book about a war, but there are no real bullets flying. I already knew the bullets flying. So yeah. I, I liked the books. And so when I was six years old, we were in Germany and I listened to people arguing. It always made me uncomfortable. They were arguing about such trivial things. And the thought occurred to me, man, there has to be a way that we can live in harmony. And then this little cocky voice, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out how you know, for a six year old who doesn't know how complicated everything is. Yeah. Right. But you know, sometimes looking at it from a very simplistic perspective mm -hmm. is, is often uh, very useful. Uh, well, turn, when we get it, caught up with all the complexities that we, we lose sight of things, right? Exactly. Uh, that's, that's what, that's what it turns out. So, yeah. and then when it was came to studying, I got into science because I wanted to understand how things work. Cause when you know how things work, you know what you can rely on. And I didn't have that reliability in the world that I grew up in. So I was always very interested in how things work. 
Then I got into biosciences because I wanted to know how creatures work. Then I went into psychology and to find out how thinking works. And if harmony is your goal, then these, these are good topics to know something about. Then I went into medicine because I wanted to know what health is because it's called healthcare, but I found out it's only about disease. Mm. And I ended up going back into biochemistry and genetics because in biosciences, you're actually studying health because you're studying the normal functioning of normal creatures in normal situations. Whereas in medicine, they're always just studying disease. And disease is not, uh, health is not the absence of disease. Disease is the, comes from the absence of health. Health has principles and components that when they're put in place, health is the result. Yeah. But that's not how they were thinking. And then I left university because I was still looking for something that I wasn't finding. And I eventually ended up in self-knowledge. And, and it turned out that what I really most needed to know through all those years that I was trying to figure it out is I needed to know how I work. Yeah, yeah. You know, how, and, does, and... How, does, how, do, how do I work? Here I am in this in this space that my body occupies well how does it all work and and right. often when you're in a, a traditional education system yeah it doesn't take into account the person or what suits them best because everyone mm -hmm. has to be in the same class you learn the same information right. and you're left to go and you know make most of whatever it is yeah but once you have that understanding of you know what really works for you and you have that specific interest in yeah. All of a sudden, the amount of knowledge and value you can bring to others is mm -hmm. exponentially more because mm -hmm. it's actually something that sits so deeply within you at the right level, right? Yeah, but, but in the traditional studies, it's even worse because, in fact, in biology, you don't study life. You study form and function. And I always thought, well, I would find out what life is. We'd have a beaker half filled with life, liquid and shining. That's how I pictured it. But we never got that beaker. So we and became when we started with something that was alive, by the time we were done, it was dead. Yeah. But we never captured what is life. We just got form and function. In, in psychology, which is study of soul, we got no soul, we got uh, emotions and thoughts. You know, in medicine, uh, <clears throat> in medicine, we, we, we uh, didn't get health, we got disease. Right. So in that sense, there's a lot that has to do with life and being alive that isn't addressed at all in any of those disciplines. And then that's and I said to my lab partner at one point, you know, we should study ourselves because we have form and function and life all together in our own body and we don't have to kill ourselves to get to know it. So I think that kind of went over his head. <laughs> And, uh, well, but, but there's, there's a lot that we need to know about ourselves that is not provided in, in the standard, um, you know, in the, in the standard educational fair. Yeah, because it, it's not even something that it not even, it, I'll try and explain this properly. It's not even something they are aware plays such a fundamental role in someone's health and in someone's life. Right. Even well, they, though if you even though if you stop to think about it, you know that life is pretty key for living. <laughs> yeah, right? There's, there, <laughs> right. there's a clue there somewhere. But yeah, yeah, also, there's a clue. It, 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 it's just it, it baffles me many a time when I treat patients, we spend a huge amount of time on psychology, on what really matters to them, what's most important mm -hmm. to them and that kind of area. We deal with the health, the absence of disease, the, you know, the mm -hmm. cellular function stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. But the yeah. other part of it that allows you to live this happy, fulfilling life, which yeah. is what we're trying to do, and yeah. for as long as possible, that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And like you say, education-wise, they just want to tell you the facts and figures, and now go away and tell other people the facts and figures. But yeah. that's, there's a huge component missing there, well, many components. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and that's why that's what, what I tried to do. I started looking at, well, what else affects health? I started with oils and got that done. Yeah. And then I worked with digestion. So I got into digestive enzymes and probiotics and fiber. And, and that was the second most neglected area. And then I started thinking, well, what else? Then I got into greens because greens are the foundations of all food. Yeah. And then it's, well, what else? Oh, because 
uh, I noticed that people, I would give them very good information and they would come and write copious notes. And they had stacks of books from all the experts that went through their town and they took notes on everybody. So they had more knowledge than I did, but they weren't putting it in practice. And so it says, well, what, there must be something else that is important here. And I realized that if you, if you inform them, it's not enough. It's important that the information be accurate, but even more important is that they're inspired because yeah. when people are not inspired, they won't make changes. So inspiration cha- affects health too. And then I started thinking, well, what else affects health? And it comes down to everything affects health. So that means if you want to be totally healthy, you have to give everything it's due. Mm. Then how do you divide that up? What are the pieces? And so I came to the conclusion there are eight pieces. Each one has a different nature and a different function. Each one needs a different kind of attention on a regular basis. Each one goes off in a different way and each one responds to a different kind of intervention. And if you want to live a really full life, you have to give each one of those eight areas their due. And, and that's it. The- and this is the thing, it has to be done purposefully. Where, where yes. I find people come across um, a stumbling <clears throat> block is a lot of the time they think a lot of these things, it will just take care of itself. I don't need to work on it. I just need to live and live my life. Do you know how busy I am? I've got kids. I'm so busy. I've got to get to work, so on and so forth. And they just say, oh, that other stuff will just take care of itself. Why do I have to focus on it? Mm-hmm. But when you... Well, speak- I, 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 think the, I think the truth is that the places where you're, fo- where you're focused and you're paying attention, those are the areas in your life that go well. And the areas that you're letting drift is where things are not going well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, but also it all depends on whether or not the areas you're focusing on are the right areas because some awesome. people focus on what they haven't got so much mm. you know oh, if only i had this then i'd be okay or you don't understand how hard it is and, and all that kind mm. of thing and i'm not saying people don't have difficult lives because for a three-year-old having bullets fired at him for for target practice you know that I, i've got a three-year-old there's no way i'm going to try and I can't comprehend how she would deal with that yeah, and yeah. so you know I, i'm not saying people don't have hard lives but we get trapped in this focus or perspective that we we look at the wrong things because it's a lot easier to believe that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and when we say no listen you've got to do some stress management we've got to get you to sleep on time we've got to talk about the mental health and what really (coughs) fulfills you and they are just like what's the can i just take some vitamin d what what, what's the thing well Well, that's a good start (laughs) well it's a part of a a much much bigger puzzle right yeah yeah. Um, but what's impressive is that you you decided with the oils that you were going to develop a process to extract the yeah. oils and yeah. um, that was never done before. Um, what was the difference about that? Because that's a, quite a key component to manufacture now. Well, that, <clears throat> I started working with oils after I got poisoned by pesticides. And how that happened was I got married and we had three kids and my marriage broke up and I was really upset. So I wanted to kill something. And I know that pesticides are used to kill things. So I took a full-time job, really careless, walked barefoot over the lawns I sprayed, you wow. know, until the skin peeled off the bottom of my feet. And then I wore rubber boots, but it was a summer job. So I did it in a bathing suit. So wind would stri- drift the yep. spray on my back. And one day I got poisoned and I knew it was pesticide poisoning. Went to the doctor, said, what, what do you have for pesticide poisoning? She said, nothing. And that day the penny dropped. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my health really is, really is my responsibility. Yeah. And I wasn't really like a junk food eater. I was pretty, pretty, not bad, you know, but, but, it, but I was kind of like just riding it. And so and then I decided, okay, well, I, if, if they don't have anything for me, I got to figure out myself. I have the background. I went into the journals, health and nutrition, disease and nutrition on the basis that your body is made out of food and every year about 98% of the atoms in your body are removed and replaced. You don't even notice, but your body is a super major construction site. <clears throat> and, that, and that means that if I raise my standard of food, water, air intake, because that's all the body's made from, made from, if I raise that standard, then within one year, I can have rebuilt 98% of my body to a higher standard. That's called healing. And I got stuck on fats 
uh, because that was the most confusing area. Like people said, omega sixes are essential, and essential means you can't make them. You got to have them. If you don't get enough, you die. If you uh, if you're if you don't get enough, your health will go down. If you bring enough back, then you're, all of the problems that come from not getting enough reversed are reversed, because life knows what to do as long as we take um, responsibility here at our mouth to make sure all of the essential building blocks land in our body so life can use them. And so they so they said, okay, my omega six is essential, and then there's another study that says omega six gives you cancer and kills you. And I'm going, what? <laughs> you know, how, how can something that's essential for health at the same time kill you? And it's like, no, there's something wrong here. And it was that contradiction that got me to look at how oils are made. And that changed everything. Because oils are the most sensitive of all of our nutrients. Yep. They need the most care. They're damaged by light, by oxygen, and by heat. We give them the least care. We throw them in frying pans. Right? Oh, I so bury they, my heat out and, of, a, and, out of a, glass, a, a plain glass bottle where they've been sitting in the sun since. Well, you know, yeah, or, and they're all in plastic bottles now. Well, plastic plastic yeah, leaches yeah, yeah. into oil, yeah, so you're getting. Yeah. And there's pesticides in those oils because they come from yeah. orga non-organic. Non -organic, yeah, yeah and, and then when they heat them to try and deodorize them, they get half rid of half the pesticides, but the other half stays in the, in the oil. <clears throat> and so I realized, you know, I can't get healthy on oils the way they're being made, because what they do is they treat them with with sodium hydroxide, then with phosphoric acid, then with bleaching clays, then uh, they go rancid, then they have to be heated to frying temperature to clean them up so they don't stink anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you have a normal cooking oil that that you find line all the shelves in the in the in the food stores but, but which is now an oxidized oil that is going to be terrible for you and cause but it's not not surprising <clears> that an omega-6 in that state is going to cause cancer because it's going to be massively pro-inflammatory yeah. yeah but it's not omega-6 that causes cancer it's the damage done to omega-6 by yeah. the processing yeah. and nobody talks about that and nobody was talking about it although it was in the research the damage done about a one percent damage in uh in the way oils are made one percent damage and in a tablespoon of an oil like that you get 60 quintillion damaged molecules like more than a million damaged molecules for every one of the body's 60 trillion cells and you think that's not going to change that's not going to affect your health so it turns out that more health problems come from damaged oils than any other part of nutrition and if we could make oils with health in mind then we could reverse more problems than with any other change we make in nutrition. And I said, we should make them with health in mind. And I knew what the issues were. And I said, I'm going to do it. And then we started and did the drawings. And then we had engineers make the parts. And they have to be very, very tight systems because you, you need to protect the oils while they're being pressed, filtered, settled, filled until they're in a brown glass bottle, in a box, in a fridge, yep. in the factory and then in the store, and then at home. And you don't use those oils for frying because frying is the dumbest thing from a health perspective that we've ever invented to do with foods. And, and it's so prevalent, the, the processed <clears throat> oils mm -hmm. in every restaurant, in every well, most people's homes, because they just go to the supermarket, buy yeah. the vegetable oil or buy the whatever other oil that they're gonna use for their frying. Yeah. Frying is very quick and convenient. And yeah, it, very quick and, and, and super deadly. Good, right? <laughs> and it tastes pretty good for a lot of people. And a lot of people right. that cook only know how to fry that. I'll fry the egg, I'll fry the chicken breast, I'll fry the onions, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's just the, the simple, easy way to do things. But it must have yeah. been quite a challenge at that time for you to re-educate uh, you know, a significant amount of people to understand yeah. what you said. Because they've come from well, like, hang on a minute, we've got these oils in big gallon jugs in the in the supermarket that everyone's always used what's the problem you know why have you got such an issue with it and yet you're making a perfectly good argument and saying no this is why we've got the health issues mm -hmm. it must have been a big a big switch for people well, to try and make that change uh well not really uh the truth is that frying oils has only been around for about 120 years 
you know, even olive oil in the old days was not used for frying. They yeah. used to cook their foods in water and then dump the water and then pour the oil on because the oils enhance flavors and improve the absorption of oil soluble nutrients. And so what, so that's not, that's not, uh, that's not a new thing. That's not a, like a, a long history thing. And the, and the oil industry wanted to sell more oil. So they bamboozled parents to say, yeah. oh, frying is faster. And, you know, everybody knows mothers are always busy. Oh, just use the oil instead. And then we love the fried foods because we got those with mother love. Because fried actually doesn't taste very good. If you actually stop and really taste it, it's disgusting. Yeah. It's acrid, it's bitter, it's scratchy, it's smoky, it squeaks between your teeth. And the burnt food, whether it's starch or protein or oil, each one of them independent of the others, when it's overheated like that, increases inflammation and increases risk of cancer. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and risk of all other diseases <laughs> because inflammation is, can run riot and that kind of thing. And, and yeah. now we've come kind of full circle in the fact that we've got air fryers that don't use any oil. And, and they right. heat foods in a way that allows you to, to, to cook them at a relatively fast rate, but without any oil and you still, and you're not burning the product. You're actually yeah, heating if, it in a good way. So it, it's interesting that um, things are moving on and people are realizing that. But right. So that, if those are, if they're, if they're, uh, you know, if you call those things fryers and there's no oil in them, then you're actually steaming your food. Correct. And, and, <clears throat> and, and, but I think that, they're calling them that so people recognize them as 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 something they're familiar with mm -hmm. you know they're basically saying look yeah call it a fryer it's fine just use mm -hmm. it because we want to sell the product but yeah. actually that you're right a lot of it is um uh, just circulating heat or yeah. you can get them steamers or i've got one that will do steaming as a pressure cooker as an air fryer all sorts of things in one and yeah. um and i find them really really useful yeah, and, and uh, but if you look at nature's mandate for how to eat, nature's mandate was fresh, whole, raw, organic. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think, I, you know, I, there's... And, and I don't disagree with that at all. I think that's a, mm -hmm. a great um, base to start from. Um, I think our, the sad thing about our culture, the upbringing, the modern world, it kind of really makes it difficult to do just that. Um, well, and, and and getting yeah. as much towards that as possible is is phenomenal um and we just kind of have to undo everything we've learned um, right. and get back to basics which is what a lot of people are trying to do now right it's yeah and it's based on understanding you know if you have the insight that oh my god you know every creature in nature eats all its food fresh whole raw and organic only we i <laughs> think we know better and we're the ones who get all the degenerative diseases <laughs> maybe there's a hint in here somewhere <laughs> Yeah, and, and lifespan is shortening. It's not it's not lengthening. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, I'm sure I'm, I'm not sure who said it, but it's it's quite a famous quote in that. Yeah, you know, humans are the only species clever enough to make their own food and then dumb enough to eat it. <laughs> yeah, which is which yeah. is true, right? We, we know yeah. nature will only you know when you look at animals, they'll do whatever they can to avoid things that in any way, shape, or form make them yeah. sick. Yeah. Or are going to threaten their life. We had um, a, we had a pound of margarine on a on a windowsill once. We wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> it was nothing. still there three it's, years later. Yeah. Not no no creature would eat it. <laughs> yeah, because it's nearer plastic, right? It's it's nearer yeah. construction to plastic than <clears throat> anything else. Yeah, and and um, and, you know, and people look at these, look at nature and say, Mother Nature knows best, but we're going to improve on it because we're going to add. <laughs> sugar yeah. and we're going to add different fats and we're going to add this yeah, yeah. white sugar white flour white oils white fats <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but it's it's such a difficult thing to uneducate people from and but mm -hmm. but that aside but so but so so you were saying well that must have been hard to do that you know yes. it wasn't i'll tell you why the second thing that happened is we the year after i got poisoned i got poisoned in 1980 so 1981 omega-3s were established as an essential nutrient by researchers. Yeah. And that was not known before. Omega sixes were known to be essential in 1929. This omega threes, 1981. Yeah. And I was there at the time and it was like, oh my God, if, you know, and then, if, then the information was 99% of the population doesn't get enough omega threes for optimum health. Every cell needs them. 
They are five times more da easily damaged than omega-6s, so they're a nightmare to work with. <clears throat> and there are only a few sources. And when I found that out, I said, oh my God, if we could make oils with health in mind and you know, tr not damage the omega-3s by this method that I was developing, and if we could bring back omega-3s into the population, we could help almost everybody. 99% of the population. And I, I went off like a firecracker. I got so inspired as like, oh my God, I have actually found a purpose for living that makes sense. Yeah. And, but how and amazing it, is that though when you do that? What's that? How amazing is it when you find that purpose? Yeah, yeah. And you're, and the, so, and, you're so consumed by it that it makes you, it just makes every day amazing then because you're just totally, out there doing totally. it. Totally. And yeah. I was literally, we were, we were so enthusiastic. We were on fire. We had energy to burn. We worked all day, drove all night, didn't seem like work. Yeah. And people liked the energy. That's what sold it. Not like, oh man, yeah, if, if I wasn't inspired to do it, it would have been impossible to change people's minds. And, but and it would have been a chore. But it people love the enthusiasm. Yeah. And so they're attracted to it. And so then, and then we, we had them change the oils they ate and they saw results really quickly because it made a big difference because it's the biggest issue and so because they saw results pretty quickly uh they started telling other people and so within two years of starting uh flaxseed oil which is the first oil we created as the rich source of omega-3 poorly balanced oil but it's has lots of omega-3s uh was the second highest selling oil in the natural foods industry where we were active in two years and, and and in the early 80s, it was the beginning of this kind of focus on health. It, it was very much a, a, a decade of um, aerobics coming to the fore and um, kind of we started getting video cassettes where people mm -hmm. could watch this stuff on TV and follow along with Jane Fonda and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And people were becoming more aware of the fact that maybe we yeah. do need to spend some time on our health. So you hit it. Absolutely, at the at the beginning of yeah, of, we of we did. Although we were also at the height of fat fat phobia, people yes. didn't like fats. Nineteen seventy yeah. seventy nine, the, the McGovern report had put fats on top of the pyramid as the thing you should eat the least of, and carbs on the bottom as what you should you should eat the most of. Low fat diets. <clears throat> And, and no, because the, the problem with the oils was not the oils, was the processing damage. But nobody addressed that. Yeah. And then people got started eating carbs, more and more and more carbs. And in 20 years of that, using that food pyramid, overweight went from 25 to 60% of the American population. Yeah. So we walked into the middle of that. People were on low fat and no fat diets and their skin would be dry and their energy would be low. And I would address those things. Even the vegetarians, you know, they they were all on low fat diets and they all had dry skin. I said, I said, what you're doing on your vegetarian diet is good, but there's one mistake. You need more oil, but the oil needs to be made with health mm -hmm. in mind. And so, not everybody bought it, but the people who did, they'd, they'd come back to us and say, wow, it's amazing. My skin and is then, dry and they would tell, I have tons of energy. And they would tell everyone else. That's the thing. And yeah. Which is, yeah, yeah, so. but do you, do you think the, the, the low fat, um, uh, the low fat diet recommendation in the 70s, 60s after Ansel Key's whole thing. Do you think that was because they realized that the, the fat was being damaged in the processing or were they completely unaware of that? And they just went unaware. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they just unaware, it unaware. Heart disease. Although, although there might have been, a, there might have been some subconscious awareness because, um, yeah, I think there was some subconscious awareness, but nobody blamed it on the on the on the cooking. Yeah. Nobody oh. blamed it on the processing. They all just said mm -hmm. fats are bad. Mm -hmm. And so it was really like a fats fats are bad area. And then they found out about omega 3s So that happened in 1981. By the time I was working with them it was 1986. And people would say fats are bad. But omega threes are really good and they would avoid mentioning that omega-3s are fats <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but at the same time the omega-6 was getting about well maybe not then but certainly later 
it was getting a bad reputation for being inflammatory. But well, like it got a it got a bad reputation for being inflammatory. Well, two ways. There's one good inflammation that it causes causes for healing, and there's a bad inflammation that comes from the damaged molecules. But they never separated that out. That, that, exactly. And and the the omega sixes were more inflammatory because of the lack of omega threes, which block their inflammatory actions unless those actions are needed and override the omega threes. Correct. And and that's the what I was going to say was it got this bad rap, but people were not differentiating between their inflammatory because look, you're using an omega six source, which is really damaged and causing problems. Yeah. Plus, we need omega six. Otherwise. Exactly. Anything, anything inflammation, any that's needed, especially acute inflammation at an injury site, we're in big trouble otherwise. So we definitely right. need it. And yeah, and, but people are just so, so quick at what reading a top line of a research paper and just say, mm-hmm. no, that's it. No more omega sixes. Don't touch them. And even the research yeah. in a lot of cases isn't aware of that whole processing causing the damage. So it's really right. interesting. Well, that- you know what? I I don't know if they're not aware of it. You would think they have to be aware of it. It's in the research. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the researchers research, but nobody mentions it in their papers. And that's mainly, I think, because they get their grants from the oil industry. So they, so they, so you can't bad mouth, you can't yeah. bad mouth your supporters, right? Yeah. Especially and then things that need to be said, don't get said. And I know at one point I was, uh, I was, when I was touring, I was doing a lot of media and I was, I did an interview with a, one of the major media, uh, stations in Edmonton, Alberta in Canada. And they loved the interview. We talked about all the things wrong with fats and everything. And they said they were going to play it on the news that night. And I had nothing on that evening, so I wanted to watch myself because I don't see myself. And sometimes when you watch your own performance, you can get some hints about how you can improve it. Right? <clears throat> so I, I decided to watch the news that evening and uh, watch the whole news. They never played my interview, mm-hmm. even though they said they were going to. But what they did have is they had an ad for Wesson Oils. Wesson oils are oils that are made with shelf life in mind, like most of the oils. And so because they were getting money from an advertiser who makes damaged oils, they weren't going to interfere with their source of income. Mm. So I got, I got dumped. (laughs) And that's just how, that's how it works. But but you know, we're seeing that now with a particular pharmaceutical company that is producing um, a very uh, heavily used product globally currently, mm-hmm. and they are sponsoring a lot of the news um, oh, yeah, yeah. outlets, and therefore yep. you can't say anything against them. Otherwise, they just don't allow it to air. And yeah. and and um, so you can see it's not it, it's still going on even now, right? Even though people realise bias like that is really detrimental. It's actually, well, actually, actually, when people lie, it's a dictatorship because they take away your ability to choose because you need accurate information to make good choices. That's it. And so this, then, is like a, this is like a dictatorship and in industry is lots of dictatorships and lots of things hidden and, and lots of times when they get uh, studies that don't give the results they want, well, then they change the parameters. So they're misusing science in order to get the results they want so they can prop it up and call it scientific. Yeah. So even science has had, had taken a, a huge hit because it's being misused. It's a good method if you're honest, but in the, in the hands of liars, science is, is, is detrimental. And, and research but, is not cheap, but it costs a lot of money to put a research oh, sure. oh, paper yeah. together and therefore yeah. if they're gonna if, if they're out to find something and they realize it's not actually going to happen they don't yeah. want to waste that because their next round of funding depends on them having something useful in this uh, this <clears throat> yeah. process so they will change the goalpost and say oh yeah we found this to be the case because you know yeah. that's what we're going to do and therefore they can continue their their funding rounds and so you, yeah. need, you just need to be very, very careful as to yeah. what you take as gospel. 
yeah. uh, that you haven't done a bit more digging around in. If yeah, if nothing else, you should you should uh, kind of pass what you're what you're being told by nature, and look at how was it in nature before we got so civilized, because sometimes you'll see that in nature, nature is telling you a different story yeah. than what the people are telling you who are selling stuff that has been that has been changed from its natural state by the different processing that we do. And between the two, I tend to trust nature more, trust life more, trust, trust the sun more, trust, trust the green world more than trusting the people because people are good liars. Yeah. Everybody, has, everybody can tell a good story. And if you've if you got something riding on the story, your story becomes even better. Yeah, but it, may not, it just may not be true and, and it doesn't have to be as long as i'm making a profit yeah exactly <laughs> and, but but mother nature knows best is a is a is a saying that you know we've known since mm -hmm. the beginning of time for example but when you look at the diversity in nature yeah. from the, the the thousands or millions of uh, organisms insects animals mammals etc when you look at all the flora and the fauna and the soil and everything else, the mountains, whatever it is you want to say that is on this particular planet, that's yeah. been here a long time before we were mm -hmm. and, and has thrived and grown and become, um, you know, the best that they can be way beyond anything we could design and build. Yeah. And then man comes along and decides it knows better and we're going to hack the system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it can only fail badly. Yeah, but like yeah, you it say, always does. If they market it in the <clears> right <throat> way, people will believe it because they don't want to have to put the time and effort into changing their lifestyle. Yeah, they'd much rather just eat that particular superfood because you know processed maca root is is the answer to everything, or or taking a <laughs> shot of aloe vera juice will will cure yeah. all my ills. Yeah. And then they can get on and continue to eat the McDonald's and not exercise and sit in front of the computer and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah. when you start looking at nature and, and, yeah. and the power of it, it's insane why people would even start to challenge it. It, it just yeah. doesn't uh, make sense. And so interestingly, in your eight step process, yeah, there are some very interesting areas that people wouldn't think are associated to health. But like mm -hmm. you said at the beginning, everything's associated to health. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we look at, obviously, you look at whole health, mental yeah. health, presence and awareness. Mm -hmm. right? It's a really big thing for me. I think people mm -hmm. need to be aware that, you know, right now you have to be open to everything that's around you because then only then you can appreciate what's going on. Mm -hmm. Life energy, which is very interesting because in a video series that you have, which we're going to offer to anyone listening, they can download that for free. Um, the first part of this video series is just about energy. It's just about life energy. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in talking to you about digestion and bloating and all this. Stuff. Yeah. Let me talk to you about what's really important. Yeah. And it was a really refreshing thing to see for me because it, it really started talking about the things that matter and people were not paying attention to. Mm -hmm. And then uh, being in harmony with uh, nature and humanity and that whole how we have to integrate with the world. I, you know, for yeah. me, I just think it's a really, really good way for people to take a breath, stop, question their existing beliefs about what health is, and then just get a fresh perspective on it from something that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your process or the eight step process. Okay. So, <clears throat> so the way I started when I, when I created the, the eight, eight steps, I decided to start from the inside out, you know, of a human being. Okay. Now, most of us live on the surface of our being. We live with, with our senses into the world. We don't live in our own space. We're not aware of, of what's in the space that our body occupies on an energetic level, on an awareness level. So I decided we need to do that because that's where all the most important thing actually is. So we've been, you, we begin with awareness. And awareness has a, is peace. 
There's nothing in awareness. It's the ability to notice. That is the foundation of your existence. And it's the foundation of the existence of the universe. Peace is the foundation. Nothing going on. Completely calm, completely formless, indestructible, never gets sick, never dies. You know, when people ask, well, what happens when my body dies or when I die? Because we think we're the body. We're not. But, you know, what happens when I die? Well, something something in your being never dies. That is will still not die when your body falls off. Right. <clears throat> and because that's where our contentment and our peace and our oneness and our wholeness live. It's it's useful to spend some time every day sitting down, becoming still, closing your eyes, shutting off all of your distractions, and just bringing your awareness a little deeper inside into that stillness and see how still you can become and see how deep you can go into it and see how long you can stay there and breathe lightly and slowly and discover what is in that space. Right. It's not complicated. I mean, this is, this is, that's the whole deal. Right. Yeah. But and, because and we're also, not good at it. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. And also it's a very much a two way communication, you know, in that you go inside, you rest, you find out what comes, then you're yeah. able to, you know, think about that perspective, think about what it means. And so it's very much the body speaking to you and you, you conversing back. People think it's, you know, I need to just not think of anything and then just be there. And I get that. But yeah. what you get from it is very much a communication process rather than uh, just, um, you know, sitting there not thinking of anything and then driving yourself crazy because you can't stop thinking of things. Yeah, no, you, you don't go there by not thinking yeah. because your thinking mechanisms are always going to be thinking because that's their job, right? Yeah. But what you can do is you can walk out of that space. And you can walk into a space within yourself where there are no thoughts. All your thoughts are in the cortex of your brain. There's no thoughts in, in your breath. There's no thoughts in your heart. There's no thoughts in your lungs. There's no thoughts anywhere in the space that your body occupies except this cortex, right? And then the idea is not to try and make anything happen. You actually try to stop doing to start being and being is actually more important than doing because you can be without doing but you cannot do without being so being is is the foundation and then you can experience the sensations in the space your body occupies you know and just and just and just be there and just experience it and it feels incredibly beautiful when when we when we can find that calmness inside so that's the that's the core. That's call, I call that internal awareness. And then outside of that is life energy. Life energy is solar energy. We are solar energy gadgets. Solar energy hits green leaves, excites electrons. They now become reactive, and they bond to make molecules. And the solar energy is stored in those bonds. And some of those molecules become our food. We eat the food, we break them down, take the, take the nutrients into the cells. In the cells, we metabolize them. So we break those bonds and that solar energy is released. That's our life energy now. So the solar energy, when it's inside of our body running everything, that's, that's called life or life energy. And that life energy is I call it the master because it weighs nothing, but it runs everything. It knows everything about the body, is everywhere present in the body, and it's all powerful in the body. Life is who we are in our personal essence. And that energy is also unconditional love because if you think about it, the energy that keeps you alive loves your body unconditionally, never takes a day off, never sleeps, never goes on strike, never bitches about wages, never, you know, even if you say, oh, I hate my life, 
it just still just completely takes care of you. So if you want a model for unconditional love, well, that's <laughs> yeah. it's your, your own essence taking care of your body is unconditional love better than mother love. The mother but, love is great, but, but it's even, not unconditional. Even when you try and do anything you can to destroy it, if you, but yeah. with smoking and drinking and uh, you yeah. know, drugs or, or poor food or, you know, yeah. whatever it is, even then it still gets up every day and <clears throat> tries yeah. to do its best to give you that energy back. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And never, and never judges you. Yep. Yeah. And that energy, by the way, when you become, when you, when you bring your awareness inside there, you can see that energy as light. You can hear it as sound. You can feel it as love and you can taste it as sweetness. So that means you're taking your senses, you're sensing inward instead of sensing outward. And it's our senses monitor energy. So that's, that's life energy. And uh, yeah, you know, it, that energy, when you get to know that energy, that is the energy all the masters talked about. When Buddha talks about enlightenment, he's talking about you living lit up from within. Mm. But you might, you're living lit up from within, that's your nature. But you may not see that, that you're lit up from within if you never bring your awareness there. Because you're never looking, right? It's like, it, it, I want to know what's on this side of the room. I have to actually turn my head and look. Yeah. If I will always look over here, I will never know what's over there. But, and, but right? far too much of it taken for granted. Like, totally going back, for going back to the beginning. Totally right? taken for granted that's and it. misrepresented. That's it. And going back to the yeah. beginning, you have to, you know, purposefully do these things. And that's what's yeah. going to bring you this amazing yep. fulfillment and joy in life. Yeah. When well, you are just taking it all for granted and, and, and all you're focused on is, <clears throat> you know, what's the next drive through <clears throat> takeaway I can get to because I'm so hungry because I haven't had yeah. food for, uh, you know, yeah. 18 minutes. Then lucky for, lucky for us, there's something that calls us home. It's called heartache. You know how heartache began, you know, we have triggers for heartache, somebody dumps me or, yeah. or somebody betrays me, or I, I was hoping for something and I got disappointed and then it hate, hurts in here in my chest. Right, that's called heartache. But that heartache is not, it's triggered by things, but it's actually not the, the, uh, the triggers are not the, the heartache. The heartache began after we were born, because when we were inside our mother's womb, I call it the Buddha tank, right? When we were in our mother's womb, there was nowhere to go. There was nothing to do. Everything was taken care of and it was safe. And so we were just hanging out in there, our awareness, because it had no place to go. It was at rest inside, in life and in awareness. And so we were just hanging out in that space. That's where you go in deep meditation. So we spent the first nine months of our life in deep meditation. And we never got bored, even mm -hmm. though there was nothing to do. We had no language. We had no friends. We, we didn't know who our mother was, right? There was nothing going on. We had nothing. We knew nothing about the world. We only knew that inner world. And we were hanging out in that world inner world that's all, the world of wholeness that all the time to, all the hmm? time growing a very complex human body yeah yeah uh, and, and we like, weren't we weren't growing the body life was growing it yeah right yeah that's right and the, so the body was gro growing we were not responsible for that either and we were just in this in this space in this in this in this presence right and then we came out and now we had to get to know the world. So our awareness went out through our senses, focusing on the world of change. Yeah. And then we had to moderate, learn to monitor change for survival. Is this friend, is this foe, is it irrelevant? And in that, co in that process, we went from being present inside, but out absent outside in our awareness to being, becoming present outside and, and becoming absent mm -hmm. inside. And that's where heartache began. Our disconnection from ourselves is the beginning of heartache. And then we try to substitute on the outside for, those, for that disconnection, but it never really works <clears throat> because you can't feel connected unless you've actually connected. 
Mm. Not you can't do substitutes. You try, and then they then they burn up, and then you have heartache. Then your heartaches. But the heartache is is basically you falling back to your disconnection from your own being, and that hurts. And so what I say to people, don't you know? Then we ignore that because we don't like it. It's intense. And so we find distractions or we explain it away or we ignore it or we deny it or we blame it on somebody or something. I say, no, what, when your heart aches, sit with it, be with it, mm. feel it. Don't judge it. Just be with it. Experience it. Acknowledge it. Maybe you could even be grateful for the fact that it will not leave you alone until you find your way back home. That's like thirst, you know, if you never, never, if you were never thirsty, you would, wouldn't drink water and you'd, you'd die of thirst. Yep. But thirst saves you. Thirst makes water relevant. Hunger makes food relevant. Heartache makes life relevant. And it's a call to come home to yourself. And when you heed that call and you do spend your time in stillness, just that far behind the heartache, less mm. than a hair's breadth behind the heartache is your wholeness. So immediately I'm thinking, how do we get young children to reconnect with themselves? When they've come out, they're, like you say, I mean, no wonder they cry when they come out, when they're born. They're like, what is <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, but, yeah holy but, smokes, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, that, that was lovely. I was, I, was, I was quite happy in there. But, but, but now, obviously, everything is external. The stimulus is massive. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like <clears throat> colors and sounds and everything else going on. And just the brain is kind of trying to make sense of all this stuff. Yeah. And so everything, especially in the modern culture, everything is very bright and very stimulatory. And, mm. and before they even start looking at phones or iPads or televisions and things like that. Yeah. And then, but what age do you think is sensible for them to be made aware? I think it's that, the wrong question. Ah, go on then. What's the best question? The right question is, what does it take for me to understand how it works? Okay. Because I have to start with myself. Like if a parent hasn't done their homework to, to go home to themselves and they don't understand the, what we're talking about, you're going to close that off for their kids too. So this is not a problem for the kid. This is a problem for the parent. Well, I need this to is a problem, problem for the caretaker. Yeah, I the need moment, to do some homework then. Really that? I need to do some homework. Yeah. Well, Personal. we all do. Yeah, we yeah, all do. Yeah. It's, there's homework to be done. That homework is because your senses will take you out every day yeah. and coming back will always have to be deliberate. So we have homework to do every day. I do that homework every day, yeah. right? Before we, I came on, I actually did that homework. So I I, that's time. interesting because I do daily sit, think, relax, yeah. breathe, yeah. but yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing it with that intent in mind. With what intent? The intent of reconnecting and being more still and listening in a different way. My, I'm doing it more of parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, get into the parasympathetic, rest, digest, right. relax, and just, just almost be doing the, the proactive work to rebalance stress. Right. Um, right. And right. It's really interesting to, you know, having the right intent, obviously, makes a big difference, mm -hmm. clearly. But, but also, when you do parasympathetic, you're talking about the nervous system. And sympathetic you're talking about the nervous system so you're in the physical realm yes when i'm going in here i'm not in a physical realm at all i'm a, with the with the with the life energy i'm in an energy realm with awareness i'm beyond energy okay and <clears throat> and uh and i yeah i i want to i want to know what's in the space my body occupies right mm. on a on an energetic level right because Something occupies all the space inside of me. Guts are there, but what about the energy? The energy is there too. And what does that feel like? Well, it feels amazing. And here's the thing, that if as a parent, I, I do that homework that seems to be in human nature to do, because animals don't get disconnected from themselves and trees don't get disconnected from themselves the way humans do. So, so this is a specifically human thing. So when I do that homework and I'm living present in the space that my body occupies, I don't close that off for my kids. And my kids will come out and they'll get to know the world, but I will also be able to guide them 
into the inner space because I'm doing that homework. Yeah. Right. If I if I'm not doing that homework, I basically close it out for them because then if they start asking questions about it, I won't know what they're talking about, and I'll just say, "Oh no, don't don't think about that." Right. And that's just like you can go back two hundred thousand years. We've <clears throat> other than the <clears throat> excuse me other than the occasional master who came wise who talked about meditation who talked about the inner life who talked about how important that is most people have lived not not that way mm. and then out of the master's teaching we turned it into religions and turned the whole message on its head because the master said the master lives within everybody you know what you've done to any one of these least of these you've do have you have done to me that means I'm in everybody, yeah. right? <clears throat> or the kingdom of heaven is, is, is within you, right? They all said that. And God lives in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, that's it within me too. And, uh, and, 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 you know, the son is, you know, sits at the right of the father. Well, that's within me too. But we don't, we have, ha we've had it interpreted as a historical story of one guy who was perfect and the rest of us are completely screwed. And then, now we now what happens is we if we do follow all the rules that the church put on us not not the master the church put on us then after we die some good stuff is going to happen yeah you so know, what while, a, what while a, you're here you've got no yeah. chance and you have yeah, to yeah what wait. a crock what a crock yeah. you know imagine yeah. i i come to you and i, I want to buy your car i said listen i want to buy your car because i know you have a nice mercedes and whatever it is right but i want to i want to pay you after you die would you buy it, sell me the car? Yeah. But somehow when it comes to the spiritual, we've basically, we've basically accepted a fool's part, yeah. right? And the masters all said, what's in me is in you. And we're living in a time when it's becoming more and more important that we individually make that connection with, within our own being of the power that created the universe and that and that lives our life yeah <clears throat> so 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 that so i think it falls to us to figure that one out i was very lucky because i became very interested at one point what was the story and then i had some really bad experiences with christians and then i had a an experience that was out of this world that taught me what the essence of the message of the master was, which is, I am come not to judge, but to love. That was the message. That's the message of Buddha to the world, Christ to the world, Krishna to the world. That's also the message of life to the body in every human being. Essence, essence of the message. I am come not to judge, but to love. Unconditional love. I think, wow. I, and, I then, think... and then it cured me of the, of the church as well. Yeah, I, I think it would be amazing if we, if you get some extra time one day, yeah. come back on the show and we'll discuss exactly how people can start looking into this for themselves and and the practicalities mm -hmm. behind getting on that road, because mm -hmm. that can I'm, be that can be a really difficult hurdle. So I'm, I'm happy, get... I'm happy yeah. to do it. It's not difficult, <clears throat> but you have to examine some things and you have to maybe come to some different conclusions about. Yeah, how li how life is and all of that. Fantastic. So that's number two. <clears throat> number three is insp inspired creativity. That's the positive part of mind. That's the shine of life into the world. That's where your good intent and you're wanting to help and to make things better for people, less pain, more joy is. That's that's the that's also inside of you. And then number four is the physical body: food, fitness, detox, rest. Um, and then food, water, air, right? That's, that's the vehicle, that's the physical, that's what we usually talk about when we talk about health. Mostly we miss all the other stuff. And, and that's the thing, people start at number four, right? They don't, yeah, pretty they, much. But, but the first ones are, are, are way, way more um, important and more valuable to you when it comes to actual experience of the day right you know, <clears throat> yeah starting... why i lay it why i lay it out <clears throat> the whole thing out is because wherever you want to start is is okay to start just recognize there's more yeah right 
So that's number four. Number five is, I call it survival smarts. That's the protective part of mind. That's about your skills of, you know, protecting your body to survive for a while in, a, in a, an environment which, which is not always friendly, right? That's survival smarts. And that's always best done pre preemptively so that if you live in a place where there are tidal waves, you, you build your house above the tidal wave level, right? Or if, you're, or if you're, uh, your house is built on the slopes of an active volcano, move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? which so happened think, recently, right? It happened recently where it hadn't erupted for 5,000 years or something, and all of a sudden there was a big issue and a lot of people lost their, their homes and everything because yeah, yeah, it was yeah. built there and they thought it would be fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Pompeii, Pompeii, when yeah. Pompeii exploded, yeah. the, the whole city was on the mountain. They, everybody got killed. Right. So and, and, and the survival smarts, you know, yeah. is, is particularly interesting from a from someone who was two and a half, three years old, having target practice made of them. Uh, you know, it, it's it, 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 it's just nobody, nobody wants to put anybody through that purposefully. But you're right. right. Knowing and just having an awareness of things. But but it makes you aware. Yeah, it yeah. makes you aware. So yeah. so I I tend to be more proactive than some of my friends who never went through war. They always said to me, "Why are you so serious?" <laughs> well, I, to me it was like they talk about, "Oh, let's go and start a war," and I would get really mad. Yeah. And they say, "Well, why why are you so heavy?" Said, because I've been through a war, mm. and this is not funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Then they all slink away and leave me yeah. sitting by myself. And you know, it, I, it, it's crazy that even in today's modern times, so many countries are still either at war or have refugees that are leaving by their millions to get away from right. countries right. And, right. and going through all sorts of hardship. My my mother, right. who is a few years older than you, um in the early um, 20th century, walked from Burma to India, which is a 3,000 mile walk, wow. not on her own, along, along with a lot of other people. And, um, but the whole family, she, I think she was 11 at the time, the youngest in the family was three or something. And they literally had to get out of Burma and get somewhere safe. And they, and they walked because of 3,000 miles to, to get there. And, and exactly, yeah. And, um, but, but even today it's happening. In, in parts mm -hmm. of the world and you just think surely mm -hmm. you know people are just not seeing how destructive this is because long term there's no value to this no but do you know why but do you know why well because they haven't connected with themselves because the unconditional love inside is running their life yeah but it's not running their head right because they're not aware of it mm. and so their head is saying oh you know we don't like these guys and maybe they got the wrong religion or or maybe yeah. maybe I want what they have and you know all because we don't feel fulfilled because we haven't done our homework mm. right and that's not going to change until we as a, as a humanity begin to recognize our nature the way I'm talking about it yeah. right because 8 billion people have that light inside of them, have that love inside of them, have that peace inside of them. Peace has always been everywhere, everywhere. Even the war takes place in perfect peace. But the people who are fighting are not feeling the peace. They got an idea in their head. You're my enemy. I'm going to kill you. And then the other guy says, you're my enemy. I'm going to kill you. If they actually were in touch with the peace that is everywhere in them, around them, above them, below them, between them. They would put down their weapon and say, look, how can I help make your life better? How can mm. I help make your life better? Your kids eating? Do they need clothes? I got, you know, blah. whatever it is, simple stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But without, but without being able to connect to the, the, to, to the, the goodies inside of us, we're always going to live stupid. Yeah. That's just, that's just how it is. And it's been like that for 200,000 years. Right. So, so number five is survival smarts. Number six is social group. Obviously people affect your health, who you hang out with affects your health, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, we, when we were kids playing soccer and we didn't like something, somebody did, we'd yell, you make me sick. Yeah. So it's like, even as kid, we knew that, that other people affect our health. <laughs> you yeah, make yeah, me yeah. sick. 
right? And then it's a, a natural environment. And that's, the, you know, that's our resource base. Probably being grateful gardeners is, being, is more appropriate in that relationship than being uh, greedy, greedy killers. And uh, what we do to the environment, we do to ourselves because, mm. you know, what, you know, so, so what we're, what, if, if, if we're not living in the environment in a sustainable way, it is not sustainable, right? Yeah, and we're really seeing consequences of that now. Of course. Yeah, the, yeah. the weather, the, 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 so many things that are now being highlighted. Yeah. And it's had to get to such a bad state for people to even start thinking, oh, actually, maybe we should address some of this. Uh, yeah. It's just such a shame. But, but, but the problem is we will not address it if we don't address this first. Yeah. Because we made it, we made the, the choices that are wrecking everything out of our state of being, which generally speaking, ignores the peace, ignores the love, ignores the inspiration. And it's more about survival. What do I need to do to survive? And I got to take that and gee, he has something I really like. Oh, let me steal that, you know? And, and, and so we lose our harmony because we're discontent to begin with. It's all about the external stuff yeah. and nothing to do with the, the internal yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one is called infinite awareness and infinite awareness is an extension of internal awareness. So your access to infinite awareness is in the core of your being, the door is open, you get, you get you feel that awareness, you feel that calmness, you feel that peace. And then if you follow that out, you notice that it's not restricted by your body. It goes from a, a center in you out to infinity, a center in me out to infinity, a center of that person out to infinity, a center of that person out to infinity. And that's, and that's also uh, coming to terms with the fact that I'm a terminal, the body is a terminal condition with a short time existence in an infinite universe and to be okay with that. Yeah. Right. It's not like, Oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Yes. It's okay. The body was never life. You know, when, when life and the body part company, the true nature of the body shows up, the true nature is, it was just, it's just a thing. Just dust. Yeah. It's just a thing. Yeah. yeah. Dust, water and air mixed up, you know, and, Life mixes it up in an incredibly uh, ex amazing way to, 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 for dust, water, and air to have the human experience for 100 years if I'm lucky. Right? And so those are the eight pieces, and each one of them needs some attention every day. If you want to live the whole, uh, a, a really full life, means being fully present in all of your being and your surroundings and not lost in thoughts in yeah. your head. Most of us live mostly in our head. And when we live in our head, we go blind and blind and deaf. Because when I'm thinking, it shut, shuts out the world. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking what people need to come to terms with is if you're living a life with that kind of connection and peace and uh, perspective, it, it can only be incredible. You know, mm -hmm. there, isn't, there isn't a day where it's going to be a, a bad day. And mm -hmm. then on top of that, if we deal with your existing health conditions, you know, with some of the stuff that you've accumulated and that we can deal with that as well, yeah. putting those two together is a, is a hugely powerful experience for a lot of people. And then it lasts them the rest of their life while they're mm -hmm. here which could be 80 90 100 120 100 whatever years old but at least every one of those days is, is insanely incredible yeah exactly uh and and the truth is that there, there's research that shows that when you when you tap into the peace that's in the core of your being you actually reverse aging yeah and you cure a lot of conditions that come from discontent that comes from disconnection and the same thing for being in touch with the unconditional love. Imagine sitting and saying, feeling unconditionally loved. Mm. How sick are you going to get about anything? <laughs> yeah, right? I, I mean, if, if people don't believe it, then just have a look at Udo and at 80 years old, how well he looks. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, right. But and then, and then if, you're, if you're, you know, inspired creativity, you know, you wake up, you have purpose. Yeah. 
something that's really worth doing because it, it helps decrease pain and increase joy for people. And you know, it's the most and, important. And how are you going to get, how, how sick are you going to get? Because <laughs> yeah. you're not going to be roaming in your head about what's wrong here and what's wrong this, and they should have done that and they didn't do that. And, you know, that's how we make ourselves sick. You know. It's a huge part of it. And like, well, like we said at the beginning, certainly for my practice, a massive part of it is that um, perspective and the mental health side of what's important and the focus. But mm -hmm. having said that, you know, what you have discussed today is just another level of that. And I need to, I need to dig more into that and then bring that to patients as well, because I think that is mm -hmm. just another fantastic addition to uh, to what I can offer, uh, it's fantastic. It, it is something that people need to just start digging into and 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 focusing on because, at the end yeah. of the day, when you really really think about it, what is there that's more important than that? Nothing. Right. And <laughs> Nothing. so, why not do the most important yeah. thing that's going to give you, know, you the most and, amount of and, value? You know what? Another thing that's a that's a nice payoff for that is when you understand when you do the practice of going inside. Meditation is like dying. You know, you leave, you leave the world out there, you leave your thoughts out here, you leave your body, you move into the energy, you move into the awareness. That's what happens when you die. Your, 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 dis, your, your focus disconnects from the world of surfaces of things, then from, from your thoughts, then from your body, drops into life. It's an ecstatic experience, except for if you're resisting dying. And the only difference between deep meditation and dying is in, in deep meditation, you do it voluntarily and you come back out. And in dying, it's not voluntary and you don't come back. But where you go in deep meditation is also where you go when you die. It yeah, is and ecstatic and you end up in an unbelievably good place. But, but it's almost as though, well, why would you want to come back? Right? Because if you're in that well, place, well, once, you're in that place to, once you're in that place, you're not struggling anymore to yeah, come back. Yeah. But, but you know, when you're alive, you're like, okay, I've got to go back to the real world now and, and do my thing and whatever it is. But you're right. Once you're in that amazing place, what, you know, the, the coming back isn't always that much more attractive than where you are. And so it's, uh, yeah, I just think we're definitely going to speak more about this for, for sure. Yeah. I am conscious of your time because we've been on a, a fair while and I don't want to keep it too long but um mm -hmm. for people who want to find out more about you we are going to mm -hmm. put some links in the show notes where they can get a free digital download um, of an ebook and also a mini course that they can listen to which I highly recommend everyone do I looked at it and it is uh, it's not just a five minute thing you've got lots of small videos that are mm -hmm. really really insightful um, yeah. and, and I'm sure a lot of people have found your, your talk today insightful. So if you want more of it, go there. Um, but if people yeah. want to reach out directly to you, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, uh, the, when we talk about the products, like the oil and the enzymes, probiotics and all of that, that's on udoschoice.com. Udos, U-D-O-S choice.com. And then the, the other website where there's more of the educational stuff, that's... Uh, theudo.com t-h-e-u-d-o.com brilliant and we'll, we'll put uh, those links in yeah. as well and then i'm i'm on facebook and i'm on instagram and i'm i got a youtube channel udo erasmus is a strange enough name that it, it's pretty easy to find me if you just google it. it it will come up it's not a problem exactly. but listen thank you so much for your time today been a fantastic chat we're gonna stop recording but i want you to stay yeah. on because i've got some other stuff i want to talk to you about for sure now okay. um, but listen so, thank you so much for today really appreciate it and and yeah i'd love to get you back and talk a bit more about specifics because i think a lot of people would like to know where to start yeah. and um and we can bring that message out to a lot of people yep brilliant all right take care okay. and see you soon thank you